in the last session we have uh, discussed uh, the deriving the amplitude of uh, the sum frequency generation using uh, the differential equation the coupled differential equation of uh, the chromatic wave in nonlinear media now in this session i will be discussing uh, the phase matching condition and is how to get um, a good amplitude for the sum frequency generation so uh, in the last class is that uh, uh, the, the differential equation that have, we have derived d a3 by dz where a3 is the the amplitude of uh, the sum frequency generation okay so the electric field of omega 3 is written as a3 the function of z a raised to i a3 z minus omega 3t plus its complex conjugate where omega 3 is some frequency omega 1 plus omega 2 okay now in order to know that uh, what we can do is we can find the expression for a3 so the expression for a3 can be easily found by just integrating this expression okay so the a3 is simply equal to the integral so while integrating we can take all the constants outside i chi 2 omega 3 square divided by k3 c square a1 a2 integral e raised to i delta kz dz okay so for the time being uh, let us assume our uh, the second order nonlinear crystal the length of the second order nonlinear crystal is l okay so this is our my second order nonlinear crystal and we are introducing incidenting two frequencies omega 1 and omega 2 and getting omega 3 so the schematic diagram of this process this omega 3 it can be omega 1 plus omega 2 or it can be any other thing so if it is getting omega 1 plus omega 2 it's called some frequency generation Okay, and then let us uh, suppose this length is L. So then uh, this integration, the integration limit, we can put as from zero to L. Okay, this integration is very simple. The the uh, integration of any exponential function is very simple to us. So therefore, this will become uh, I times chi two. Omega three square divided by k three c square a one a two e raised to i delta k times l minus one divided by i delta k. Okay, so uh, we can make a further simplification for this A three. So this we can write as A three at the location L after covering distance L. This would be the amplitude. So we can make uh, the further simplification next page. Okay, so what we can do is uh, okay, still all this term. Okay, I can be cancelled. So there is no need to write i here. So chi two omega three square divided by k three c square a one a two. We can take e raised to i delta k l by two is outside. Then inside the bracket, you'll get e raised to i delta K L by two minus e raised to minus i delta K L by two divided by delta K. Okay. Again, all these are just constants. Okay, better we can write it. K two omega three square divided by K three c square a one a two e raised to i. Delta K L by two. What is e raised to i theta minus e raised to minus i theta? So 
so there is nothing but two i sign okay so therefore this become two i sign of delta k l by two divided by delta k now we can have an l by two here and we can put an l by two here so one two can be cancelled okay so therefore our equation become psi two omega three square divided by k three c square a one a two times l a raised to i delta k l by two the sine of delta k l by 2 divided by delta k l by 2 so this is the amplitude at the location l now we can find out uh, the corresponding intensity so better we can take this to the right side okay so this k3 at the location l this intensity of some frequency mega 3 it is equal to l and we can write as i3 at l that would be equal to half epsilon zero n three c times modulus of a three at l the square so therefore this expression become we'll get uh, of epsilon zero in three C, the mod A three square will become chi two square omega three raised to four divided by K three square C raised to four A one mod A one square mod A two square L square and you raise y delta L K L by two, the mod square will become one. Then sine square delta K L by two divided by delta K L by two square. Good. So the I three depending upon the mod A one square, mod A two square, and plus this quantity. So the I three would depending upon the intensity of the uh, the omega one and intensity of omega two because intensity is uh, proportional to the amplitude square. So I three obviously depending upon I one and I two. Okay, so if you want, we can write in terms of I one and I two. So for that, we have to find the expression for I one and I two and just uh, rearrange it. Okay, this I one we can write as half epsilon zero n one c uh, mod A one square and I two is again half epsilon zero uh, n two c mod a2 square then accordingly we can just uh, substitute what is your a1 and a2 a1 square and a2 square in terms of i1 and i2 and we can write this i3 in terms of i1 and i2 but that i am not doing okay so if you are interested you can uh, just write it down in terms of i1 and i2 okay so what uh, the point i want to mention it is here so here if you look at uh, all these term uh, are just constants okay so what i can do is i this i3 at l we can write its proportionality. So I3 at L is proportional to 
is proportional to i1 it is also proportional to i2 and it is proportional to l square and it is proportional to sin square delta k l by 2 divided by delta k l by 2 square so this function become very important here So basically, I think depending upon the intensity of uh, both frequency, both incident frequency, omega one and omega two, it is not a S I one I two. It also depending upon the length of uh, the crystal and the square of the length of the crystal L square, and it depends upon uh, sine square delta K L by two by delta K L by two the all square. So this is called sine function. Now you, you can uh, plot uh, the sine function as a graph. So sine square delta k l by two divided by delta k l by two the all square. It is here, and this is delta k l by two. And if you plot the graph, uh, the graph would be almost like this. Okay, so it will have a peak at a uh, uh, delta a k l by two tends to zero. Okay, the peak is small, so we can plot it like this. Okay, so it's almost like this, the curve, and we can see that uh, uh, the peak is maximum when this delta k l by two tends to zero. Okay, so it says that uh, your i three of l is maximum. We can produce the maximum intensity when. Delta k l by two tends to zero. So that is. So here l cannot be zero and two cannot be zero. That is, when delta k tends to zero, tends to zero. So if delta k equal to zero, we'll get uh, the exact peak. So. I three of L will be maximum when delta k equal to zero. What is delta k? The delta k is k one plus k two minus k three equal to zero. Now this condition. The condition of delta k equal to zero or k one plus k two minus k three equal to zero is called phase matching. Okay, so in case of uh, k two nonlinear crystal, there can be many processes: some frequency generation, second harmonic generation, difference frequency generation. But in order to get the maximum intensity, that frequency has to satisfy the phase matching condition. and the phase matching condition at a time only one frequency can be attained so not all frequency can attain the phase matching condition together 
so that is why we say that uh, even though uh, all the phenomena are possible but only one pos one phenomena would be dominant at a time and uh, how to choose the phenomena uh, so that would depending upon how you are orienting your crystal so the piece matching condition can be achieved by uh, the uh, orienting the crystal in a proper direction okay so this is the uh, uh, the, the important point so this condition is called the piece matching condition so when delta k is, is zero we'll get uh, the maximum intensity and again uh, so not only delta k equal to zero so around delta k equal to zero also we are getting uh, uh, as a sufficient uh, intensity okay so um, uh, for a good for a good intensity we can set uh, delta k l equal to or delta k l by 2 equal to 1 so the corresponding length we can call it as a coherent length so the coherent length can be written as 2 by delta k so if the length of the crystal is uh, is around 2 by delta k then we can get uh, the more or less good intensity and where we will get uh, uh, this smaller value so this uh, value we are getting around uh, and delta k l by 2 equal to pi and you have not uh, you have to note the other point is when the, if the length of the crystal become large then uh, the efficiency of uh, the production of uh, omega 3 would reduce okay so uh, delta k equal to zero the piece matching condition is the uh, the most suitable condition but uh, getting delta k exactly zero may not be possible always okay so there will be some uh, small value for delta k and uh, so but we have to ensure that this delta k l by 2 must be small if delta k l by 2 is large okay then uh, we will not be getting as much intensity so if delta k l by 2 is around 1 if delta k l by 2 is around 1 then uh, okay it is possible to have uh, sufficient intensities for the light so that is why we have setting as delta k l by 2 equal to 1 is uh, uh, the length corresponding to get uh, some uh, so, um, some non negligible intensity for the uh, the some frequency generation or for the non linear processes okay so with this uh, uh, we have finished the discussion of the phase matching uh, now in the next uh, the only point we are missing is how to achieve this phase matching condition so it is not always possible to achieve the phase matching condition very easily so how to achieve the phase matching condition is very important uh, and there are uh, two types of uh, two ways to make uh, the phase matching condition so there is one and it's called the type 1 phase matching or type 2 phase matching so all these aspects uh, we'll discuss in the next uh, uh, class in the next lecture so with that uh, uh, we'll finish this uh, chapter okay and uh, the remaining portion uh,